All right, hello everyone. Here we're back for hole number two here that we're going to do a revision for real quick. And uh, what I've been doing for this one is my quarterback it's gonna it's gonna allow me to uh, be very precise with my ring play and this is a power one ball and probably a plus 10 percent on the correction for this headwind case and I'm going to use very similar spin if you guys watch my other revisions um, I had one where I did um, three bars of top spin with a with a extra uh, apocalypse, and then I just used uh, two bars of top spin with a uh, power two ball. So now that I have a power one ball, we're going to still stick with that uh, plus two top spin. So that is going to be the number that I recommend for you guys. The closer you guys get to min club, uh, the easier this hole is going to be. So that's the you know most important component that I can mention to you guys is getting it uh, very close to uh, min club. And here you can see kind of what we're working with here, right around two. And you can see kind of where I'm setting up safely into the fairway away from the edge and we're just going to pull right towards max here just a little bit into power not very much let me make sure that i extend that since i'm going to be going into the power <clears throat> so just a tad of power you can see not even really a shaky needle or anything um, the biggest part will be the curl. Ooh, and I hope I didn't drive it too far. So I might have just given that just a little bit too much, but I, oh man, that is definitely probably a little bit too much. That's the third time I've done that. <laughs> so, you know, you might not want to, well, if you're going to do that little bit of power that I just did, you might want to use one top spin. Um, you really don't want to wind up in between clubs and I'm going to be dangerously close now what I usually play for the second shot is you know it, you can see there is a slight elevation to it so I'll usually use maybe a minus 10% number um, I haven't really even been using the calculator so if you guys watch my other shot, well, I think I did on day one, but on my second revision, I didn't even really use it. Here you can see that I do get in between clubs again. I didn't even make it to the right club. And what I'll use for this club is usually a plus 10%. So here that's going to be... No, in this case, I'm going to use plus 20%. What's that? 7.7, 8.5... We want to go somewhere in the neighborhood of 8.5 rings. We're going to even see if I even get it off at this point. <clears throat> Perfect ball. Oh, and it just hits the pin. A little bit too much power. As I mentioned, you know, you're not going to want to play that at Endbringer distance. Um, you know, that little extra, uh, I didn't get to be precise with that at all. So I don't want to speculate on why I missed that because I really don't know. Um, I didn't really get to count rings, uh, the way that I wanted. I should have just timed out for you guys and did it again. But you know, the, the first thing that you can learn from all these revisions that I just gave you guys is, you know, make sure that you don't hit it to end bringer distance. You, you, you don't have to back off much, but it ha, you know, I had a, just a tiny bit of a shaky needle. 
Had I did it with no shaky needle, or if I wanted to replicate what I just did there, I could just use one top spin. And it would basically, you know, wind up perfect. You want to get it as close to that min number as possible, but not actually to that min, to that uh, wedge. So that's the best advice I can give you for that one. Um, if you do need to see, you know, the made shots, I got it both with Thorn and and bringer so you'll be able to still look over those shots this last one was very rushed it's going to be a very hard for you to learn anything of value for this one um, so you know do be sure to check out those other two holes